updates. Sadness. Yeah, it, 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 it's especially now that more information comes out where at least mitigation, if not prevention, could have taken place. All right. And the headline reads, uh, Texas Department of Public Safety official says cops were reluctant to take at the Uvalde shooter because they could have uh, they could have been shot. Hmm. That, that, that's not what you put out. You know what I mean? That's why they got bears, right? So uh, here's a here's a clip here. Let's uh, let's take a listen. Wolf is that there was multiple officers that arrived on scene. There was three officers that arrived that made entry um, at one of the entrances where the gunman actually made entrance to. We had other another four officers that made uh, entry at the other entrance of the school. So there was officers inside that school as they were taking gunfire. They were also calling in for reinforcement, uh, backup, tactical teams, uh, snipers. Any additional personnel that could arrive to assist to not only with to with the situation, but also to assist in evacuating uh, students and teachers. At that time, that's when a U.S. Border Patrol a tactical officer arrived, also with a Zavala County Sheriff's deputy, as well as two additional uh, Uvalde Police Department officers were able to go into that classroom uh, with a ballistic shield as cover. And of course, we know that one of those officers, an agent actually was uh, was shot, uh, was grazed at the top of the head, but they were able to shoot and kill the suspect and pre preserve any other life. We know that there was other injured children inside that classroom that they were able to save as well and get them to and get them to cover and at that point it became a recovery process a rescue operation trying to rescue the injured and also any other potential children or teachers that were inside those classrooms but don't current the best practices lieutenant call for officers to disable a shooter as quickly as possible regardless of how many officers are actually on site Correct. The active shooter situation, you want to stop the killing, you want to preserve life. But also, one thing that, of course, the American people need to understand is that officers are making entry into this building. Uh, they do not know where the gunman is. Uh, they are hearing gunshots. They are, they are receiving gunshots. At that point, if they, if they proceeded any further not knowing where this suspect was at, um, they could have been shot. They could have been killed. And at that point, that gunman would have the opportunity to kill other people inside that school. So they were... So the gunfire, okay, from the shooter of the 18-year-old, and you know what, I'm done mentioning the kid's name. He's a lunatic. We'll, we'll, we'll stop with that. So real quick update, uh, or at least a back brief on it. Uh, so this psycho shoots his grandma in the face, right? That's uh, And then was on the run, right? Police was chasing. Uh, the guy crashed near a, uh, a funeral home started shooting towards people outside that funeral home, then ran across the streets, hopped a fence into the schoolyard, and was outside the schoolyard shooting while the cops were still there pursuing. And a teacher had the back door unlocked. Because you know how we were talking about why weren't these doors locked or whatever? Mm -hmm. A teacher, uh, it's been reported, a teacher had the door unlocked for we don't know what reasons. Maybe smoke break, you know what I mean? Yeah. Who knows? But, and I guess the kid knew, the shooter knew, or, or f figured out that door was unlocked, goes into the school, and officers do go into the school, and then they retreat from the school. And then for an hour, the kid's in the school, and they hear the gunshots going off and everything, and nothing until an hour later that's when they go in and that border patrol agent uh shot and killed the uh shot and killed the, the guy so they're saying that uh, they could have been shot well we know you know that that's kind of what your job is right that's why you sign up for the job i signed up for the military i kind of knew i was going to get shot at mm -hmm. you know but it's interesting too because in in basic training you could tell people signed up not knowing that they were going to be put in harm's way mm. you could tell um and, and that's very stupid of them or i blame their recruiter for lying to them because if you signed up after 9 11 you know uh you kind of knew you were going to war and you kind of knew that you were going to be shot at or do some shooting yourself and you got kids in there that were just like uh oh no no i'm uh uh, uh i'm just a, a a medic or i'm gonna be oh no i'm gonna be a uh uh, take my position, a combat correspondent. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, guess where you're going to be? On patrol. 
you know, telling the soldier's story. He's shooting, getting mm -hmm. shot at. Right. Yeah, so I, I get that, but... Uh, you just have to carry a camera with you, too. Yeah, you're damn right. You're damn right. Everywhere I went, Lawyer Wayne. It was amazing. You know, uh, I had a great boss, too, Sergeant Hunter. I'll get into him. Uh, we we're going to do a special Memorial Day on Monday. Yeah, he was the man. But the the cops do admit that, that, that they botched the Uvalde school response. Wrong decision, period. Yeah. Yeah, no shit. No shoot. Sorry. Emotional. And plus my coffee. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Police stopped a border patrol from entering the Uvalde school, an official said. So on this one. The local police on scene at Rob Elementary School, the Uvalde, that's the school that it took place at, stopped elite Border Patrol agents from entering the school when they first arrived as the 19, year, uh, as the 19 children and two teachers uh, were uh, murdered. According to the New York Times, Border Patrol agents arrived on scene far earlier than disclosed, but were stopped by the police from entering the elementary school. Why? And, and you saw the videos of the, the father being stopped from going in and getting his kid, mm. right? Did you see that? The handcuff. Let me tell you, yeah. Yeah, that, and one guy got tased. Did he? And one lady got, yeah, cuffed and detained. Yeah. We saw for the to go inside. Mm -hmm. We saw the handcuff. Like, if that was me in that class, and it was my father, you'd have to shoot the guy. <laughs> you would have to shoot my father three times in the chest, okay? One in the head just to make sure. <laughs> like, wow, they, this is all, and it raises so many questions. And it leads, oh my God, the conspiracy theories I'm, I'm, I'm seeing about yeah. all this. Mm -hmm. And this lack of lot. information leads to the, conspiracy theories. What's the response, though? The hyper panic mm -hmm. like this, mm -hmm. you know, what happens, you right. know? The police are hyper panicked. They don't know. They're not trained. They're not doing well. They respond by controlling parents that are out of their minds, scared and panicked. I just don't know what the I don't know what the solution is. Well, it's interesting because they have check this out. So Uvalde police, and I went on the social media to find this. I scrolled down a bit, a few, you know, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Meet our SWAT team. Well, we we, sh we could have met him on Tuesday. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's just a picture. Yeah, no, I hear you. You know. But if you have a SWAT team, utilize that SWAT team. Mm -hmm. Especially when the kid's on the line. You don't send the representative out to go talk on uh, national television to say, hey, mm -hmm. our officers could have been shot. It's just weak. It's just weak. And I love cops. You know, uh, blue lives matter, no doubt. It, when, when cops do great things, yes, thank you. But when they f freak up, you got to call them out on them. I think they really screwed up on Does this specific instance create a, a different kind of training platform for people then? You know, you train SWAT to go into drug houses, mm -hmm. banks, things like that, where there are adult probably people in there, you know, you know casualties of fire and things like that maybe they're not as worried about but then when the kids are in there maybe it just suppresses them down because they don't want to shoot a kid accidentally they don't want they you know i don't know i mean we're just not trained i don't think people are trained to do this and here's know? a small town okay you're, yeah. Baldi, you're talking about fifteen thousand people all right and with that being said like take clarksville tennessee okay montgomery county two hundred fifty thousand people now right and uh how, how many school systems over 50 now all right mm -hmm. And we do active shooter training here within Montgomery County. And that involves the teachers, the students, okay, staff, uh, uh, not only Clarksville Police Department, but Montgomery County Sheriff's Office, and also Fire and Rescue, and also uh, Fire and Rescue falls under the medical teams, the EMS. So all that training does take place. You know, like when we used to do fire drills back in the day? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, they still do fire drills. They just added more drills, and now that involves an active shooter scenario. Sure. Right. I don't believe this school did it. I don't think they've done those things. Plus, now there's questions being asked. Where's all the surveillance tape? Mm -hmm. Yeah, where is all the tape? They got video cameras. I mean, you don't have surveillance. It's a public school. You don't have any type of surveillance on this? And the year is 2020. 
two, two well, yeah, twenty twenty two. Right, you know, so, yeah. you know. So that's why there are a lot of questions and a lot of theories, if you will. I don't even want to call them conspiracy theories, but I, because that's such a negative connotation to that word or phrase, conspiracy well, theory. But well, now know. you put this into play. How many how many people are now going to try to sneak guns to their school because of this is rice? Why was the door unlocked? Okay. Why? Why was the teacher smoking? Most likely, uh, probably. You know? you know, that's that's my best bet. What do they say? Well, in the absence of any answers, the most reasonable one is probably it, right? Yeah. Is that Pavlov? Pavlov's uh... what? I think you just made that one up, but it sounds good. Yeah, Pas- yeah. <laughs> you call it Joe's Law. In the Pavlov's absence of any answers, the most reasonable one is that's probably it. it. That's right, it. right. That's that sounds like a terrible rule. Don't follow that, guys. No, Pavlov from Brooklyn. A nice guy. Yeah, yeah Pavlov yeah. from Brooklyn's yeah. Law. Tony Pavlov. But he's a total idiot. Don't follow that one. Yeah, if it doesn't make sense, the most thing that makes sense makes sense. Yeah. Right. Okay, that sounds pretty good, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we're not hearing anything on camera footage, okay? The door was open. They didn't let cops go in to go after this they detained parents going in and i get it well, freaking what if you do let the parents in mm-hmm. there was one mom that did make her way in she grabbed her kid and got out All right but yeah and real there was a uh this this little girl okay 11 year old says that the shooter played grim music also as he started killing so the uh she survived the, uh, this massacre. And the girl who says that she survived after smearing her friend's blood on herself mm-hmm. so the shooter would think that she was already dead. This is what she told CNN. Isn't that crazy? I call this more like an 11 year old. So, um, the. They said that the shooter made eye contact with the teacher, said good night, and then killed her. He then fired on others, killing some of her friends, and made his way into an adjoining classroom. Now, in that classroom, there was two kids on there at the te- a table that had uh, a, a tablecloth mm-hmm. over it, and th- they're making sure they're being quiet while this guy's walking around shooting away. All the while, cops are still outside, not making a move in. Another question, why was there no school resource officer? Where was the SRO? Mm -hmm. Why was there not one? Is this an area that went for that defund the police thing? A lot of places dropped their SROs when they were going along with that to fund the police movement in texas i, I don't know there, there, there's some blue parts in texas well i mean i would say it's probably budgetary yeah you know more than anything mm-hmm. first first uh kind of year back after covid people were like can we really afford an sro it's a quiet small little town nobody expects that to happen that might be why they cut off the cameras could be we don't have any camera footage because we cut them off we couldn't afford to do it anymore you know when that when there's a lack of anything that makes sense the thing that makes sense the most makes sense the most right. pavlov tony pavlov <laughs> tony pavlov <laughs> but uh but yeah but this it even gets more strange. How about this one? So the Uvalde police, they uncovered a 2018 school shooting plot. And that plot was to take place in the year 2022, which is, as the time of this broadcast, this our Lord's year. No offense, Robert. I already took an offense. Okay. You know, <laughs> He loves you too, though. Huh? He Who loves you? Tony. <laughs> Tony Pavlov. Pavlov. <laughs> so uh, the police in uh, Uvalde, Texas, they arrested two teens in 2018 for allegedly plotting a Columbine-style mass shooting to take place in the year 2022. But, okay, there was conflicting information on whether uh, one of the suspects was the same person who killed the, you know, the 19 uh, children and the two teachers. But here's the thing. I don't care if it's the guy or not that was arrested. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. You were warned. 
you were warned. If, if somebody makes a school shooting Columbine style threat, you better take that serious. You better take that seriously. Like you had better be like, okay, it's 2022. Uh, we got just what two more days left, three more days left to school. Uh, it's over. Let's make sure that there's a. It, it, it's over now, right? School. Mm -hmm. We're out. Yeah. Let's just make sure that the you know we got a cop there. Let's just make sure that the doors that are designed to be locked, locked. Yeah. So the uh, plot uncovered in 2018 resulted in the arrest of two unidentified teenagers from Uvalde, who police said at the time were inspired by the 1999 attack in Columbine, Colorado, in which, you know, there was uh, 13 killed, 13, uh, but that, two students and, and 13 people. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I haven't really followed this very closely, but from what you've just told me, mm -hmm. it sounds like this person had no intention really to end up there no he just ended up there he crashed right nearby yeah yeah oh this kid wasn't right right so it was Th just that's a, why i say he had nothing to do with that arrest so in 2018 because that's what i was thinking i mean if i'm playing it through in in, in the, my mind it's like he jumped the fence he was checking every door and one of them just happened to be open could be that's, why, that's why i wish there was some surveillance available sure 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 but yeah, the, yeah you know and maybe there will be but uh, there just hasn't yeah. been any released. Well, they just don't want to show all the cops just standing there like, what are we going to do? Yeah, that, that, sure. that, that's a damn good point. You know, and uh, speaking of the shooter, the Texas shooter's mother shares her thoughts following the massacre of the children. Bay, what do you think she said? I don't know. Me neither. The mother of the Texas shooter, all right, said, uh, quote, I have no words. I have no words to say. I don't know what he, he was thinking. And uh, she said this in an interview with a CNN aff affiliate uh, down there. Her father told CNN that she has been crying so much that uh, one of her eyes is swollen shut. Uh, he had his uh, reasons for doing what he did, and please don't judge him, she said. I only want to the innocent children who died to forgive me. Listen, this this guy's going to be judged the rest of his well, he's dead now. But this uh, this guy is going to be looked at as just a piece of poop, you know, for the sure for for the rest of history. Nobody has kids and wants this as their kid. Yeah, I don't know, but you, you got to you raised a psychopath. Yeah, you know, I mean, I I hate to say it, so sure, boring. sure. I mean, you raised somebody who is afflicted by psychopathy. Yeah, at, at the age and of eighteen. I don't know. Like what, as a it, as a parent, as mm. a parent, if I knew my kid was capable of psychopathy, what would I do? Turn yeah. them in? Do right. I stop them? Do I look at their best interest and try to keep them functioning? I don't know what you do as a parent. It's difficult. There had to have been signs. There always are. There's always are. But as a parent, what do you do? You're going to turn your kid in and have them committed? So because you don't know what they're going to do, they're not, you don't know that they're going to do this. Like what happened in Buffalo? Yeah. The the kid said it hey i'm gonna i'm gonna go shoot up some store okay and kill black people mm. okay mm. and they sent them to a therapist right okay they tried right yeah and the kid he knew what to say to get out of it yeah he uh, the kid said oh i just said it to get out of class yeah right yeah yeah but yeah uh, shortly before the shooter drove to uh, rob elementary school uh, he shot his grandmother in the face at their home, piercing her jaw and upper cheek. Do we know if she died or not, the grandmother? Not from the way you just said that. Yeah, because, I, I again, th there's a lot of misinformation out there. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put much stock in most of the stuff we're reading right now. Yeah, the father said, I, I just want the people to know I'm sorry, man, mm -hmm. for what my son did. Saying that his son is a good person. Who was stuck to himself? Uh, no, you, see, you're lying to yourself, Dad. Okay, this Dad is lying to himself. If your son did this, he is not a good person. And I get why he's saying it because it's a—he's still in shock, this father. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, I hate to tell you this: your son is not a good person. The fact that you would say that shows that you—you you are not in the right frame of mind at the moment. I'd like to see what they do once they complete an autopsy. I wonder if he has any, any drugs in him. Drugs or um, tumors in his brain or something like that. Kind of like the shooter mm -hmm. um, in Texas before that had a tumor in his brain. Some people go oh. crazy over things and they don't know why. 
you know, the, what the parents are saying is for the majority of his life, we raised a good kid. We tried to raise a good kid. And this is one act of incredible violence that is different from the child that we raised. He, you know, is maybe they'll come out later and be like, it, no, it always it comes as a surprise because it's not the sort of thing that ever happens twice. Yeah. We, we, it can't happen twice. So uh-huh. it's an only and ever a first time thing. That's why everybody says we never saw it coming because once it happens, it never mm. happens again. And psychopaths like that are very good at hiding their intentions for a long time because they know that they're, they would be stopped. This one officer who rushed into the, uh, the school uh, grabbed a barber shotgun. Did you hear this story? This is interesting. So an off-duty U.S. Customs and Border Protection agent rushed into Rob Elementary School with his barber shotgun, rescued dozens of children and his daughter after his wife texted him that there was an active shooter. So Jacob Alvarado had just sat down for a haircut when he received the message from his wife, Trisha, a fourth grade teacher at the school, right? So the text, there's an active shooter, help. And she sent that before sending a, uh, I love you, okay? He immediately got out of the seat, according to uh, the, the barber there, grabbed the shotgun from the barber shop, sped towards the school. His daughter, a second grader, was locked inside a bathroom while his wife hid under a desk with her students. In another wing of the school, that's when the friggin' uh, nut, nut job over there had opened fire and killed the kids and teachers. Yeah. A tactical team, uh, it might have been that SWAT team we were talking about earlier, a tactical team. All right, there's the guy. There's the teacher. There's his wife. Mm-hmm. There's the kid. So a tactical team was preparing to enter the school when Alvarado arrived. Desperate to get his daughter and wife out, he made a plan with the, with the officers trying to enter the school and evacuate as many students as possible. So, yeah. Good for this dude. I don't blame him. Right? I mean, you got kids. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It seems like the training got in the way in this situation. Mm. Like the bureaucratic rigor of the training got in the way of just, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I understand what the guy, the first guy was saying. You know, there's, you know, you can throw a bunch of officers heartfelt into a, a fire of bullets and you know, they can all get shot, and maybe you take the bullets away from the gunman, and he can't shoot kids with them, but it's not effective. It's just a wall of dead people but, on but the putting, ground. putting the mom in handcuffs, I was trying to get in there. I, I get it. You, you don't want her getting killed. I get that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, uh, I mean, you're not going in there. You, you, you have to explain why you're not going in there the, to these people, and, and you did not. The lawyers are going to pick over every bit of this for the next... Ten years. Oh, I bet. As, let's not jump too quickly to start passing blame around. It appears to be one guy at, at blame for all of this. And there's so much hate going around. And mm-hmm. It's easy to start pointing at other people and saying, "Well, why didn't you stop it? Why didn't you stop it? Why didn't you do something?" Point, I mean, people, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there right now thinking about that about themselves in that oh, town. Let me why show didn't you I this. stop this? Why didn't I do this? Let me show you this. But this is unreal. Let me give uh, them a moment to grieve and. We can sort out some blame later, I'm sure. Yeah, Lawyer Wayne, I'm glad you bring that up. But let me let me pull this up because I like what you just said. Calm down, okay? L- let's get all the information out there first. Let me go to Andy No on Twitter. This guy's a hell of a journalist. He's fantastic. He, he's, uh, I believe he's out of Portland. So you got to watch out for those Portland people. But mm, Yeah. No offense, Rom. No, he got beat up by the... Yeah, he, he did. Got, he got, like, massacred they, by the... They threw these shakes that were filled with cement. Yeah, they busted his head open. Yeah. They beat him up. So, Andy, no. I, I like following him on Twitter. I recommend you do the same. Or, you know what? Even better, follow at Joe Padula and then follow at Andy, no. You could see the links on there. But, uh, but yeah, as, uh, as Andy's uh, Twitter page gets pulled up here... All right. So, 
this one guy sent out this fake message on Twitter. This is crazy. This this is why, like what Lawyer Wayne said, pump the brakes. Did you say pump the brakes? That's the spirit. Mm-hmm. Of okay, what yeah, I said. yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Pump, pump the brakes. Pump the your brakes. brakes. Right, you know, because we're because we're still using those old cars with carburetors. Right, pump the brakes. <laughs> but uh, here is okay. So this is one guy. All right. Uh, where is it? Uh, I should have had this more prepared. But I think you're going to find this very interesting. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, did they make them take it down? <laughs> uh, They're always doing stuff like that, Joe. Update. Not Deleting anymore. Them. Not Deleting with Elon them. Musk in the helm. <laughs> is he in charge now? Yeah, is not, he in not, charge? Not officially. Oh. The man behind the account, uh, my cancer uh, journey, that claimed uh, a viral thread... Okay, and it got retweeted over 32,000 times by the left that Texas Governor Abbott offered a bribe to him. Claims he was hacked. Has locked or disabled his account and deleted posts about the... Uh, damn it. Damn it. Damn it. They always, Foiled again. They always take it down, but it, it's... <laughs> All right, so here, here's here's what uh, I'm trying to relate here, okay? So this fake account, My Cancer Journey, said he's from Uvalde, Texas. Well, the, the guy doesn't even, the guy's from, uh, he's from Washington, Spokane, Spokane, Washington, okay? And he put out this, uh, there, that's the guy. And he's a, in, in this fake life of his, he's a black guy from Uvalde, mm. okay? But uh, but Jason Nuartes, the, okay, the Spokane man who claimed uh, in the viral thread uh, to be a family member of a deceased, well, he said when he was leaving the school, a guy from uh, representing Governor Abbott of Texas came up to him and said, hey, we want you to be uh, uh, in a pro-gun message. And they said, F you, get out of here. And then he said... Well, that's when Governor Abbott's representative said people disappear. It happens all the time. Right. So he put that tweet out there. And it got shared by blue check journalists, celebrities, and it was going viral today. Calling for Greg Abbott to step down and resign and be investigated. I'm talking about like CNBC (laughs) retweeting this. I think there's an old saying, something like a lie can make it halfway around the world while the truth is still putting on its pants or something like that. Yeah, yeah, a Pavlov. Fake news spreads Pavlov. fast. Tony Pavlov, he's got a yeah, he got it all. Yeah, yeah. Like even Titus shared it, the comedian Titus. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, just, just pump the brakes. There's a comedian named Titus. I'm surprised he's still alive. Yeah, me too. I was like, whoa. Me too. Yeah, he's, he's up there. He's alive and we, we lose Ray Liotta? I Come know. on. Poor Ray. <sighs> but now we got to. There is no God. I'm just throwing it out. Yep. I watched, now. I watched the first two episodes yeah, babe. this morning. Was there a <laughs> warning? What? Not no minds, no. The warning added to premiere of Stranger oh, oh. Things season four episode oh. following the Valdi shooting. The, oh. yeah, yeah, they yeah they said something about that. Yeah, but I'll usually skip over that. Netflix decided to add a warning label at the uh, the last minute to the premiere of the Stranger Things season four. These kids, they they don't look like kids anymore. No, they're teenagers now. Yeah, they you, just fast forward, so it's now yes. the early nineties. Oh no, it's like. The late late eighties, Le- yeah. Do because they, have- they still playing Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. So you know what I'm saying. Do they have slap bracelets? <laughs> not yet. No, no, not yet. Not yet. Well, no. uh, yeah. So uh, they should. Keep- they should just keep going. Like you know, just go through the nineties. What's the disclaimer? Just, just let's follow the kids as they grow up. I would love that. <laughs> I, I haven't kept that. up with Stranger Things. So I'm sure they can keep the story going, right? Well, yeah. 
Have they gone woke? I don't think so, right? Nah. Uh-uh. Yeah, there you, you go. You, you can't go woke in the show so like that. You can't go woke in the 80s. I don't know. <laughs> they did with Glow, with the Glamorous <laughs> Ladies of Wrestling. I was loving that show. That is a great show. Yeah. And knew. then season three, it was like... You knew that was coming, though. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I mean, Mark Maron's in it. He's not going to let I like things. Mark Maron. Oh, do you? Yeah. He's kind of woke. I, I don't agree with him all the time, yeah. but I, I, I love listening to him. Yeah, yeah. He's got a great podcast. Well... I watch his clips more often yeah, than yeah, the yeah. entire show. Yeah. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog. 